Hey guys, what is up? Dave here with another interesting video for you guys. So recently, I don't know how many of you guys pay attention to the news, or I guess lack thereof. I just realized I have two of these same files. Oops. Anyway, I don't know how much you guys pay attention to the news, but there was a gigantic leak, um, hack, if you will, of uh, a bunch of Nintendo files for everything from Game Boy all the way up to the Nintendo Wii and even some Nintendo Switch stuff. And I've been following all of it. A lot of it's ending up released on archive.org. Again, very useful website, just like my last video stated. And it's been a ton of fun to download this stuff and dig through it. So I wanted to show you guys the kind of stuff that's actually being leaked, along with... Um, just, you know, some general knowledge, or I guess not general knowledge, but how to do this safely and look through these files safely. So if you want to do this at the utmost safest level, you definitely want to download these files and then open them up on either like a virtual machine running a sandboxed environment or on a computer you don't really care about. Myself, I have enough spare parts. If this hard drive gets corrupted to the point that it's no longer usable, tough titties I'll just put another hard drive in it so I'm not really worried about it but a lot of the things that have been leaked are so far everything there's more stuff coming every day so so far there's been you know some Wii stuff this unsorted stuff the story behind it is the company that made the Chinese company that made the IQ N64 game player which was released only in China. It's this weird controller with an N64 built in. It's only got a couple games embedded into the console. Um, they got hacked, and everything was stolen from them. Nearly 2.1 terabytes of data was stolen from them. And it's everything you could ever think of and more. So I wanted to go through. So like here's DD 64DD, which is the Nintendo 64 disk drive that was never released. Here's a bunch of files, for example, that were leaked that were never supposed to be public. Here's a bunch of spreadsheets that who knows what they are because I don't have Microsoft Office. <laughs> Here's some private conference information for the Nintendo DS or like DevCon and stuff like that too. And the Wii. Um, this is, again, just the kind of stuff that's being leaked. Now, obviously, a lot of this is already public in some way. These are generation two pokemon gen 2 files that um were leaked due to this hacking basically and it's like source code and ways to mod the roms and a whole bunch of other information documentation straight source code you know it's it's insane the tools and stuff to mod stuff um the make files if you want to actually try to make your own ROM. All the information for making your own Pokemon game, basically. There's so much to this leak, it's ridiculous. Here's like the gold and silver, Pokemon gold and silver debug files for, you know, the release of this data shall not and will not hurt anyone or anything and shall not and will not be used to exclude, extort, harass, stock, docs, brigade against or otherwise hurt anyone or anything please be civil let's see this archive is containing four roms of japanese pokemon gold and silver two of them are debug roms two of them are release roms all of the timestamps are february 3rd 2000 three months after release uh this can be right as the main difference between these and the real releases are bug fixes cool so very interesting as these are basically debug ROMs, which is really freaking cool. So like you can see a bunch of information about these ROM files and things like that, fixed files. I don't even know what these are. So this is probably one debug version. That's a debug version and just who knows it's so there's so much interesting stuff to this it's ridiculous i can't even open that i didn't even realize my sound was on i'm sorry but whatever 
There's so much to this, it's ridiculous. I can't open that. Again, don't have Microsoft Office. This is a fun one that I'm going to have a ton of fun with. So these are Nintendo 64 ROMs um, that are compiled for, you know, test development and stuff like that. So like Block Monkey is probably some game. There's Hello World, which would probably just be like an example program of how to program for the N64. Here's the Game Boy Pack demo for demoing the Game Boy Pack and playing a Game Boy game on the uh, N64. Oops. Not all of these work. <laughs> Interesting. So, this is going to tell us what everything is. Autofill doesn't seem to be here. Block Monkey, this is an application that measures a simple measures a simple performance. A user can change the size of the display list or parameters and continue the effect when rendering. Bump map, Chrome, simple program for reflection, CI8FB. This program is similar to autofill. Rendering is processed using 8-bit color. Cool. Let's see. DDSP game, N64 disk drive sample program. That's really cool. See detail. This is a sample program which explains how to use the multi tiling textures. EEP test, a simple program to test EEP ROM stuff. Uh, fault, a sample program to process CPU interrupts. Cool. This program executes tests for one megabyte or one M flash ROM. There's so much in here, it's ridiculous. Uh, Sample program for fog processing, sample a simple sample program for the N64 transfer pack to read Game Boy games. Very cool. There's so much in here um, that it's it's really hard to go over anything everything uh, in one video. But I wanted to make a video for those that either cannot find these download links or. Um, don't trust downloading this stuff or just don't want to get into trouble. <laughs> I didn't know this had a password. I'm sad now. Um, <laughs> here's like source code for uh, Super Mario 64 PC. Uh, this is literally translating Mario 64 to PC is basically what it is. This is to extract assets and the make file is for compiling the game and there's just so much to this it's ridiculous enhancements the actual source files menus and sounds um assets are pr you know there, there's so much all the different levels i don't even know how long that was being worked on but it's been worked on for a long time I don't remember what this one is. It's just called source code. This is Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon Blue's direct source code from Nintendo for the games. So you can actually use these to straight modify Pokemon Yellow and make your own games at code level with documentation. It's really freaking cool. Let's see this BMP file here. Some script stuff, that's pretty cool. Aha, look. So you can probably replace that BMP image and make your own boot screen for Pokemon Yellow, for example. Maybe. I don't know. I couldn't tell you, but like here's a compiled ROM. Pretty cool. Sounds. More source file info. Oh, here's a bunch of ISO images, but they're not for what you think. Cool. There's definitely a lot of stuff here that's very cool. Let's see, let's go back. Blue, same thing. Bunch of source code for Pokemon Blue. Here's monster data, very cool. Map data. More documentation. More data. Just a bunch of stuff. Here's a readme, let's see, can I even? I cannot open this. Got it. <laughs> so we'll close that. Um, let's see. Switch UE4 documentation. So this is for Unreal Engine. For using Unreal Engine to do... Oh, Pogo. 
Let's see if I can open this and see what I'm what I got. So profile guide and link time or optimization. So to enable Pogo for or Pigo for Nintendo Switch. What is Pigo? It's not Pokemon Go, obviously. Hmm. Here's some here's a PDF. Here's PDFs. Just a Eula. Cool. Don't really care about that. Requirements, release notes, performance, builds. Let's see, what's okay. So this is just all documentation, like I thought. Here's some images, some placeholders, the engine. Very cool. Just all around a bunch of really cool stuff. Automation tool, build graphs. Let's see, development and Unreal Engine. Let's open it up. Oh, it's literally a random screenshot of Unreal Engine. Got it. Unreal build system. Ah, cool little uh, screenshot there. These images suck. Include. Uh, I'm guessing this was supposed to be like a website of some kind, and that's why it's opening up the way it is. Um, let's see, unsorted. This has these files in it, which I don't know what they are. It's a bunch of weird stuff. And then this is some Nintendo Wii PDF stuff for explaining Nintendo Wii uh, SDK, which we don't have the Wii SDK yet. But the real interesting folder is this Nintendo Switch folder, which this was leaked a while back, actually. But again, this is a very cool folder, as this is the bezel engine. And if you don't know what the bezel engine is, uh, the bezel engine is a in is an in-house um, game engine for the Nintendo Switch. So that Nintendo created basically, and. There's a bunch of different ways to use this and learn to use it, I guess you should, I could say, for probably making homebrew-based games, since this is the actual game engine. Like here's builds for tools and stuff like that. I don't know how to use these files. I haven't looked into actually using them yet. So take anything I say with a grain of salt. Spy? That's a... That's an interesting program name. Hmm. <laughs> oh man, graphic stuff. There's so many things in here, it's ridiculous. But uh yeah, this is the bezel engine, which really freaking cool that we can even say we have this for homebrew sake. There's some extra stuff in here. There's the Unity 3D plugins for compiling games for uh, the Nintendo Switch on Unity 3D, so you could now make Nintendo Switch games on Unity 3D using this SDK. There's also Unreal Engine stuff that's the same way. And then there's that documentation again for explaining it. Here's some more documentation for like application icon creation. They're in these weird ZARF files, which luckily are just archives and um, you can open them just like zip files, and then you can open them like this and actually see what they are. You know, it's a bunch of interesting stuff. Like here's a PSD and Adobe Illustrator file, and then it's actually basically a web page to explain what stuff is when it comes to the um, documentation. Clang for NX, I don't know what this is. But let's open it up real quick and we'll check it out. I would not be surprised if Nintendo does a takedown on this video. I'll be honest. If they get an ear of it, if they find out I've done this. Ah, compilers. Interesting. Again, I would have to read into this stuff and see what it is. But here's revisions. Let's see. Doesn't say anything about what it is. Okay. I'm sure there's files in here that explain what all this stuff is eventually. I don't know what capstone is. This is new to me as well. 
There's documentation for this, though, it looks like. Oh, just a license. Disassembly framework. Okay. CapstoneEngine.org. Let's check you out. Capstone is a lightweight, multi-platform, multi-architecture disassembly framework. Target is to make Capstone the ultimate disassembly engine for binary analysis and reversing in the security community. So this is like another IDA Pro. Implemented in pure C with bindings for D, F sharp, Visual Basic, PHP, PowerShell, Haskell, Perl, Python, C sharp. There's a lot of stuff here. This is cool. So this would be worth checking out for damn sure in seeing what this stuff actually is, how to actually use it. Here's 32-bit, dot A, dot A. Don't know what dot A is. Let's see. Very small file. Dot arc. Hmm. I don't know what dot arc is. Maybe it's dot archive? Nope. Not an archive file. Interesting. Revisions. Just that. And some ex uh, some source code. Here, let's extract this file. And I can actually go through it. Like here's ARM64, which would be equivalent to like you could use this for anything ARM based that's 64 bit ARM based. That's pretty cool. Source code for it and stuff like that. So this is just a header file, so it's not that important. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. This is interesting. I don't know what it is. Oh, okay. And there's not much else here. Let's see, deploy logic. Okay. So it's an interesting little thing there. And then the bezel engine. Here's documentation for the bezel engine. Documents from 2016 for the bezel engine. So here's, you know, some random HTML file that's a lot bigger than I thought, apparently. Oh, of course, it's in uh, not English, but, you know, I'm not mad. I just can't read it. <laughs> but it would be very easy to translate, so not a big deal. Here's some, like, H API explanation. So it's basically all the documentation you would ever need for using the bezel engine, which is very cool. Um, I'll leave that up for now. So that's documentation. Here's network add-on stuff for doing like multiplayer probably. Um, here, we'll go biggest file. Ah, some of this is probably Unity engine stuff. So I see like 2017 listed out like this. Let's see, deploy bin, network add-on, programs. Let's see, some source code that is Visual Studio. C++, of course, that's what I expected. Here's some libraries, NX64. I wonder if that means either 64-bit or Nintendo 64. Then again, they have X64 here, which is... Here's some includes, that's pretty cool. Samples, samples are always nice because you actually understand what's going on if you can see a sample. NSO, I believe that's a Nintendo Switch Online file. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff in here. And while I do have a Switch that's possible to mod, it's not mine, it's my girlfriend's. And I'm not going to mod it again because I don't want to get her Switch banned from online play and stuff like that. So I'm not going to take the chance at hurting her just to, you know, pique my curiosity. BEA files, that's interesting. Start in. Okay, interesting. 
So we can close this one up, close that one up. So that's like network add-ons. Let's see, here's tutorials which are very useful with, you know, understanding what this crap is. This ended up being a little bit longer of a video than I thought, but I'm not mad. Samples, resources, sample tutorial, collect cube finish, collect cube tutorial files. Ah, CSV files, particle effects, audio, fonts. We all know I like font files. Configs, programs, collect cube, start in. There's the source code. Cool. Memory finish, memory tutorials, sprite shooting, sprite finish, start. I'm going to actually start it. That's pretty cool. Assets, audios, textures, models, maps, Lua scripts. Cool. I keep whistling because I have a gap in my teeth and I freaking hate it. <laughs> oh, look, more fonts. Boring. Effects. Interesting. And some audio files. Cool. So there's a bunch of demo stuff here. That's really cool. And then you have the actual bezel engine versions. And you can actually take these and use them to your heart's content and try to learn the bezel engine all the way up to 2018. It looks like there's nothing newer than 2018, which is okay. You know, it's never a big deal. But these are bigger files for sure. So I'm going to find smallest open this up and maybe I'll actually extract this one so we can actually go through and see what the bezel engines really like I had an idea to try to learn this engine and see if I could make something for the Nintendo switch as far as like a basic racing game because you know hint hint wink wink nudge nudge I'm working on something um, I'm working on converting it to 2d but Let's, I, I don't know yet if I can do this kind of stuff. So I'm going to let this act, extract because it looks like this is possible to run. So give me one second. I'm glad I paused this because this is a much bigger file than I thought and it's under very high compression and going pretty slow. Um, I wouldn't say slow in the standard of like it's slow. Slow is in there's a lot of files but it's very highly compressed. And I didn't know zip files could compress to such a small file size compared to what this is going to actually extract as. So, again, I'll unpause this when it's done. Yeah, compressed, it was like 1.5 gigs. Uh, try 6.06 .06 gigs decompressed. This That's astounding how well they compressed these files. I've decided I'm going to do opening the bezel engine as a part two to this video because it's already 23 minutes long and most people don't make it all the way to the end of my videos anyway. If you did make it to the end of my video, um, recommend me an energy drink to try. I've tried Bang, I've tried, I've had Red Bull, I've had most of the monsters, obviously I've had Rockstar, I've had Nas. There's one called Avalanche I've had, I've had C4. I've had amino energy. If there's anything, I've had cocaine, the energy drink cocaine. <laughs> Great drink, just doesn't exist anymore. Um, recommend me something that I didn't list. And I'll try to find it either online or something like that. And I'll buy it and I'll try it. And I'll let you know how I liked it in a future video. I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you are ready for the second installment of this video actually going through the bezel engine if it ever extracts i've had this problem before where explorer just crashes and then all that date that uh space on the hard drive is missing and i can't delete it or recover it so i'm just gonna let this sit for a moment i don't think everything's crashed no it's not which means i can go in still and i just gotta wait at five seconds is gonna be like a couple hours because there's so many files here. But uh I mean I can pause it and stuff and I can do stuff with it. 
second part of this video, or part two of going through the bezel engine, uh, will be uploaded um, once I record it and or am able to even extract it because apparently it's going to be difficult. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.